On Saturday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu backed Trump's plan to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, tweeting, quote, President Trump is right to build a wall along Israel's southern border. It stopped all illegal immigration. Great success, great idea. Now, he's referring to a razor wire fence that was built on the Israel-Egypt border. And joining me now is Jeremy Ben-Ami, president and founder of J Street, a liberal group which advocates for peace between Israel and the Palestinians, and Zara Bilou of the, of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Thank you both for being here. Uh, and Jeremy, um, the, um, the tweet, uh, or, or Mexico actually, um, has had some thoughts for Prime Minister Netanyahu, rebuked them um, via Reuters Saturday. Um, this is what the Mexican Foreign Ministry said it says the Mexico foreign ministry expressed to the government of Israel via its ambassador in Mexico profound astonishment rejection and disappointment over Prime Minister Netanyahu's message on Twitter Mexico is a friend of Israel and should be tweeted treated as such by its prime minister what is going on in terms of the politics um, in Israel from your point of view as to why Netanyahu would support something that was issued on Holocaust Remembrance Day and by the way the um, proclamation by the president on Holocaust Remembrance Day did not include a mention of the Jews that were killed in the Holocaust. So that was interesting. Your thoughts? Right. We're seeing a really troubling development in politics, which is that the far right of American politics is aligning with the far right of Israeli politics almost on a no questions asked basis. Uh, it almost doesn't matter what one side is doing and what the policy is. The right wing here will back the right wing there and vice versa. Uh, that is not good as a pro-Israel advocate, somebody who cares deeply about Israel's future. Uh, it is not healthy for uh, the U.S.-Israel relationship for it to become, and it has become, uh, a political partisan football. Uh, and primarily that's happened at the instigation of Prime Minister Netanyahu, his ambassador Ron Dermer, and others uh, who have forged this alliance to the detriment of both American and Israeli interests. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll read just a little bit of the statement that J Street did put out on Friday. It says the fact that President Trump's order appears designated, this is about the, the Muslim ban, designed to specifically limit the entry of Muslims, evokes horrible memories among American Jews of the shameful period leading up to World War II when the U.S. failed to provide a safe haven for the vast majority of Jews in Europe trying to escape Nazi persecution, most ultimately perished in the Holocaust. That episode remains a blot on the conscience of the United States. Uh, and in fact, there is something called the St. Louis Manifest, um, which was created. It's a Twitter account that was incredibly powerful, and it has been putting up the names, the faces, the pictures um, of young people, Regina Blumstein, Werner Stein, uh, Ermagard Coppola. Evelyn Grieve and others who were killed after we denied them entry to the United States. Um, Zara, uh, I want to ask you, um, this is something that we have seen happen around the world, the persecution of people based on their religion. Obviously, it happened during the Holocaust uh, to European Jews. Um, what do you make of the reaction around the United States to what is clearly persecution of Muslims just for trying to visit their families in the United States? I have found hope in just how incensed my fellow Americans are that our now president is attempting to fulfill his campaign promises. The hundreds, if not thousands, of people that showed up, the hundreds of thousands of people who showed up to the women's marches, and then the hundreds and thousands of people who are showing up to airport protests across the country remind us that Donald Trump did not win a majority vote in the country. And what he is putting forward is not representative of what we profess to be our American values. And, you know, Jeremy, I think for a lot of us who um, uh, look at the far right sort of taking hold across, really across the globe, how can progressive um, uh, Israelis, progressive Americans, progressive, how can we come together um, and sort of fight this? I, I really am sort of at a loss. Well, I think it really starts with the shared values that we have. I mean, Zara and I may not agree on some other policy issues, but I think that she and I and our communities uh, understand what it means to be uh, oppressed, understand what it means to be at the receiving end of this kind of treatment. I, I was at Dulles Airport last night very proudly uh, being there because my mother was a refugee from Vienna in 1938. My yeah. father worked to get folks out of Europe and couldn't bring them to the United States. The doors were barred yep. and people died because of that. So we have something to work on. Absolutely. And Zara, last word to you on this. Um, how can people people help um, the Muslim community in the U.S. It best. What, what do you want people to do? I would offer three things. One, there are ongoing protests at the airports. Show up to one Sunday. 
just being there is a show of solidarity. Reach out to members of the local Muslim community to express your support. Those words of friendship mean a lot right now. And then connect with the Muslim organization that's doing this work, whether it's CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, ADC, the anti, the Arab American Anti-Discrimination Committee, the Muslim Public Affairs Council. The list is long. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, uh, we, we stand with you. I think most Americans are horrified by what we're seeing. We really appreciate you coming together to talk thank to us. You. Jeremy Benamy and Zara Baloo, thank you both. Appreciate you. And Thank stick you. around. Thank you. A